All right. Hi, it's Jen here with First Step Nutrition Registered Dietitian. And today, in honor of the new Canada's Food Guide, I wanted to have a chat about kids and calcium. So we're going to talk about whether your kids should still be drinking dairy, how much calcium they need, and where they can get it. So since the new food guide was released, I have been getting questions about whether kids should still be drinking milk because uh, dairy is no longer its own food group like in the old food guide. No, dairy is included in the protein section of the food guide, but there's no guidance as to how much different ages need. However, these details hopefully will be coming later in 2019 when uh, more recommendations are released for health professionals regarding how the new food guide can fit into, um, you know, more specific patterns of eating. So milk... Um, just to be clear, the food guide is for kids two and up because I've been getting questions with from moms who have babies between age one and two asking if they should still be giving their toddlers milk. So just to be clear, the food guide is for ages two and up. And if you have a child under two, our guidance is a nutrition for healthy term infants. And what they suggest is breastfeeding till age two or beyond. Um, if you can't breastfeed, formula. And then between 9 and 12 months, you can introduce a full-fat cow's milk or goat's milk. Uh, closer to 12 months if your babe's not getting a whole lot of iron from solids. And, and no milk alternatives either until age 2 because they don't have enough fat and, and calories and protein for your little one. So those are the recommendations for milk um, for under age 2. Now when we look at the food guide, it's for over age 2. And I want to um, start by talking about calcium because we know that um, milk is a good source of calcium, right? So what are the uh, purpose? What's the purpose of calcium? So calcium builds strong bones, strong teeth. You probably know that. 99% of the calcium in our body is stored in our bones. And 1% of calcium in our body is circulating in our blood. And this is really important for muscle contraction, heart contraction. And that 1% will stay very even. So even if you have very low calcium intakes, you're not taking in much, the blood level will stay totally even and your body will draw from, from the bones to make sure that that blood level stays even for the contraction of your heart. In terms of how much we need, so most nutrients have what's called a recommended daily allowance set, which meets 97, 98% of the population's needs. However, we don't have the research and studies to set that high level recommendation for calcium. Instead, what we have set in North America is an adequate intake for calcium. And they set this adequate intake. Um, there's lots of information on the, in the dietary reference intakes uh, for calcium. You can Google that and find the document if you want about how, how this was set. But they looked at calcium retention, so the amount that um, kept a good store of calcium in our blood and, and our bones, and set the adequate intakes using those numbers. So for adults age 19 to 51, the adequate intake of calcium is 1,000 milligrams per day. For kids age 1 to 3 years, it's 700 milligrams. For kids age 4 to 8, it's 1,000 milligrams. And for kids age 9 to 18, it's uh, really high. It's 1,300 milligrams just because that's the time of really rapid growth and when they're laying down a lot of bone mass. So what does... <laughs> What do these numbers mean? How much is in our food? How can we get that amount of calcium? So when looking at um, milk or a fortified alternative, like a fortified, you know, almond milk, soy milk, hemp milk, if you're age two and up, those are fine as well. You'll get about 300 milligrams of calcium in one cup. Um, one and a half ounces of cheese, which is about two cheese strings, and three quarters cup of yogurt, um, which is more than, you know, you'd find in the little individual portions now, also supply about 300 milligrams of calcium. When looking at other foods, so calcium is fairly widely distributed throughout the food supply um, at lower amounts, though. So, so to get 300 milligrams of calcium in broccoli, you could eat four cups of broccoli, one and a half cups of bok choy, uh, one cup of tofu, one cup of calcium set tofu, so that's a good option, one and a quarter cup of almonds would supply about 300 milligrams of calcium. And you might have heard that uh, spinach is a good source too. So one and a half cups of spinach will supply about 300 milligrams calcium. 
However, um, there's so many um, oxalates in calcium. So phytates and oxalates are nutrient binders that you find in some of our foods like grains and spinach. So it leads to decreased absorption of some of the nutrients in that food. So well, calcium um, spinach seems like a really good source of calcium, only about 10% of it is absorbed by our body. So you can see there's lots of sources of calcium. Um, we don't need milk, of course. So if somebody avoids dairy because they're vegan or for environmental, um, animal welfare reasons, that's totally fine. I just encourage you to look at your diet and how much calcium you're getting. And if you're meeting your adequate intake um, through dairy, fortified alternatives, the veggies, and if not, you can always um, easily find a calcium supplement as well, just to add to your diet to make sure you're getting enough calcium. Um, because the thing is that there are no short-term indicators. If you're low in calcium, you won't know. You can't tell by a blood test. The only way you'll be able to tell is um, you know, later on in life when you may be more likely to have weak bones, more easily fracture and get osteoporosis. So we have to kind of think long-term when we're looking at our daily calcium intake. Um, for little ones, I do um, su still suggest two to three servings of dairy per day for toddlers, just because it's such an easy way for them to get in uh, the vitamin D that they need to help absorb the calcium, and the calcium, of course, and magnesium, and fat, and protein. So two cups of milk meets your toddler's daily protein requirements. I know a lot of parents are worried about protein. Um, so it, it's just an easy, nutrient-dense source of calcium and other nutrients that kids tend to like. Saying that, we do have to limit it for some kids because they'll just fill up on milk all day and won't leave any room for other nutrient-rich foods, such as iron-rich foods. So there's a bit of a balance there, but I would um, suggest that you look at where calcium is coming in your diet, your children's diet. If it's from dairy, I think that's totally fine. You don't have to cut it out <laughs> of your diet or your kid's diet just because it doesn't have its own food group anymore. But you can look at some of those other sources of calcium or supplementing as well. If you have any more questions about your kids, dairy, calcium, uh, feel free to comment below and I will be sure to get back to you.